WGPR Detroit HD2. You're watching WHPS, Highland Park, Detroit. WGPRFM. Variety, and when they say something inspirational or like, you know, just make my day. 107.5 HD2 Detroit. commemorating the end of slavery in the United States. It's a holiday that has been celebrated since 1866 and represents a critical turning point in American history. Open up a classroom history book and the author might say that slavery ended on January 1st, 1863. The day when President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, it established that all enslaved people in the Confederate States in the rebellion against the Union shall be then, thenceforth and forever free. Of course, the proclamation stated this, but it did not instantly free any enslaved people. It would take another two years for slavery to end in the United States. In Texas, slavery continued uninterrupted during the Civil War. The state wasn't involved in large-scale battles and there wasn't a real presence of Union troops. Two months after the war came to a close, U.S. General Gordon Granger arrived on Texas soil and read General Order No. 3. The people of Texas are informed that, in accordance with a proclamation from the Executive of the United States, all slaves are free. Granger's arrival marked the freedom for 250,000 enslaved people in the state. Although emancipation didn't happen overnight, celebrations broke out among newly freed black people. Juneteenth was born. The following year, freed people in Texas organized the first of what became the annual celebration of Jubilee Day on June 19th. The holiday wasn't widely celebrated across the country, but the traditions continued to grow over the next several decades. In 1979, Texas became the first state to make Juneteenth an official holiday. Finally, in June 2021, Congress passed a resolution establishing Juneteenth as a national holiday. And now we take you live to the East Room of the White House, where President Biden is going to sign the law making Juneteenth a national holiday. All right. Juneteenth marks a date of major significance in American history. It's the longest tradition of celebrating the emancipation of thousands of enslaved people who forcibly worked and lived in inhumane conditions. The two-year march from when the Emancipation Proclamation was signed to the arrival of troops in Texas is a metaphor for the many ways in which freedoms for Black people have been delayed in this country. Today, the holiday is a way to acknowledge past faults, help heal current divisions, and move toward a future of a more perfect union.
What's up, what's up, what's up, Detroit and surrounding areas? I am back. This is the real black coffee, no sugar, no cream, coming back to you black, strong, and unfiltered. And guess what? Juneteenth is coming up this week. And so we are in a pre-celebratory mood for the annual Ypsilanti Juneteenth celebration put on by my warrior sister, Trisha. Her organization, Survivor Speaks, and many, many other sponsors within the Ypsilanti community and area. I am honored. You know that my genre of music is jazz. So when I venture out into another genre of music, you know that it has to really touch me to the depths of my soul. And the genre of neo soul and R&B is one of those things that I listen to. But this evening... We have someone who is well respected, known, a Grammy nominated artist, and a Detroiter. Dwelle! What's going on, Dwelle? You think it's fine. How, how, how's things going? Things are going real, real good. I'm so happy to have you take the time out to come on the Real Black Coffee today. You are loved and appreciated. So we're going to just get right to it. We know that you're a Grammy-nominated artist. You have so many songs to your credit who have just rose through the charts. But who is Dwelle as a person? Who is Dwelle? As a person, I'm somebody that loves to explore creativity 
whatever that means, whether that means through video, through audio, through, through visual arts. I'm all about expression. You know, um, that's the artist side of me. Other than that, I'm a black man. I'm a father. I'm a brother. You know, I'm all of that. I try to be all of that. So it gets rough sometimes trying to, um, it's new to me trying to find the balance of being a father and, 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 and playing all those roles and still find time for expression, you know, but that's what we do. We balance, we make it happen, you know? Wow. Yes. And that's a perfect segue into my next question, because we know that artistry takes various forms and we know that you are writing and producing songs, but I also was told that you're an artist that you paint. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? And what is the inspiration behind your painting? Yeah, I recently got into paint again. I uh, tried painting a few years ago, around the time or around the some kind of album. Um, and, you know, I went out, I bought acrylic paints. I tried it. I liked it, but I got busy. So, you know, I put them up. They stayed in storage for a while. Uh, then I had a kid. Then I had a kid. Kids started acting up in school, so I took him out of school. We were doing worksheets, and I told him he wasn't getting a recess, you know, but what we could do is, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the studio, and I'm going to set up the easel, and I'm going to let you paint. I'll let you fill paint. And you can express yourself that way. You can get your energy out that way. So he started painting, and uh, he was successful with it. He uh, he sold his paintings, you know, uh, abstract, of course. But, you know, he sold them. He, 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 he has an eye. He has a thing going on. People like it, you know, and that got me wanting to start painting. So I started painting abstract, and then I started doing you know, more uh, subject-based paintings. And I really, really got into it, you know. So that's another one of my outlets right now. Um, I recently graduated to oil paint, and now I can't go back to acrylics, you know. So oil is where it is. Wow. Thank you. That's so inspirational, though. You know, it started out as some extra learning opportunity for your child and morphed into you now enjoying it. And that's a great legacy to leave for him, too, to say, hey, you know, this is how this started and look where I am now. And the fact that his paintings are selling already, that yes, is yes. amazing. Look, you know, the, the music industry is harsh. A lot goes on within the music industry. How have you been able to maintain your positivity within this environment and keep your fan base engaged? Um, I think it's a mix of just not taking for granted uh, the opportunities that have been presented to me and also a mix of having the right people around me, you know, that know the business, know how to navigate it when I don't. You know, and can set the pieces up for me, you know, so that I can continue to keep this as a career. And, you know, it's, it's just about, it's just about bringing a good time to the listeners. And, you know, I, I, with the music, I try to create a soundtrack, you know, for people's lives, you know, and I try to stay true to that. And, um, that's what I've been doing. And hopefully I can continue to do it until I can no more. Well, I tell you one thing, um, jazz has been my genre of music, even from a small child. You know, that's what my mom listened to around the house, some old school R&B, but then it just morphed into jazz. But one thing about me with music is um, when I'm in a good mood, I vibe with the beat. When I'm in a more somber mood, I vibe with the lyrics. Mm. With your music, I do both. So when you yeah. said you try to provide that soundtrack for people's lives, no, you're providing that because with your music, I can vibe and really feel the lyrics to the depths of my soul, you know, and identify nice. with it. I'm 60 years old, you know, so you probably have listeners all across, you know, spectrums, but being 60, you know, we can be set in our ways, baby boomers or something else. And so, um, but like I said, when I listen to your music, I can vibe with the beat that you're giving me, but still also identify with the words and the lyrics of the song. Mm -hmm. And that is very important to me. So I thank you for that. If you I appreciate can, that. 
you are welcome. I appreciate it too. I mean, I'm always vibing to that. And I just appreciate knowing and having the opportunity to not just interview you tonight, but also to introduce you on Saturday. I am just elated. So listen, what would be your dream collaboration? And a person could be dead or alive. But if you could collaborate with someone, who would that be? I think if I could, if I could collaborate with anybody, oh man, I would probably pull out the Fender Rogues. I would get a banging band, and I would create a masterpiece. In my own right, in my own mind, I would create a masterpiece and I would have to put, whew, I would have to put Donny Hathaway and Minnie Ripperton on it. Wow. Like a vibe, it would have to be, it would have to be all vibe. Man, and you know, Donny Hathaway was such a, I, I'm going to say ghetto storyteller for lack of another yeah. word. But the way that he would tell stories, you know, him and Curtis Mayfield were one of my two favorite people when it comes to that. I love Curtis Mayfield. And, you know, he was a great storyteller. But with Mm -hmm. Minnie Ripperton hitting those notes that she could hit, man, that would be epic. Do you have any new music that's being released or upcoming? I have a ton of new music. (laughs) Uh we have yet to 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 figure out a date to uh to drop it, but know that I am creating. I'm filling up the can so that when the time comes, we can make we have we have all the decisions in the world to make. You know, we have a lot to choose from. Well, we will be looking forward to that. So, listen, everyone, come out to the Juneteenth Festival this coming Saturday, June twenty second. At 107 Ferris Street, Ypsilanti, Michigan, 48197, the lot directly behind Pepper Reds. And you will get the opportunity to hear what I'm talking about. I don't know um, if you haven't heard it where you've been, but just in case you haven't, then you have the opportunity to hear Dwele do his magic and make those wonderful beats and those storytelling lyrics come together for a beautiful collaboration of artistry that touch the depths of my soul. And Duela, you will be on at 715. Is that correct? You're closing us out? That sounds that sounds about right. Okay. Well, I want to thank you. Thank you so much. It's been an honor and a pleasure for you to come on the Real Black Coffee Show. I will look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Is it anything else you want to close with? Uh, I'm just, I'm just excited. You know, I'm looking forward to, uh, to getting out there. Actually, I was just out there. I, I, if you see, I don't, they can't see me. You can see me. I just got done, uh, golfing out that way with the Howard Alumni, uh, University, Howard University Alumni, uh, uh, first golf, you know, classic. So that was a good time. You know, it was for a good cause. So that was, uh, you know, a little warm up, but I'm headed, I'm headed right back out there next weekend. Can't wait to do it. Absolutely. And they can see you. I guess I should have told you this was radio. You oh. can see like a, a TMZ kind of thing. They can see you. For those of them oh, okay. that are well, online hey, and Facebook, <laughs> they can see you. Everyone else is listening on 107.5. So, Dwayne, oh, okay. thank you so much for all you are and you represent as a Detroiter, as an artist, as a father, but most importantly, as a black man. Salute and respect and you enjoy your night thank you, thank you. i appreciate you love you all righty love you too so long okay we can go to a musical break and he's off Thinking what? Someday. Will we have a better future? Someday. Lately is more than than, than enough.
tanto trabajo que hacer. Pero un día, un sueño que juntamos unidos como uno. Here I am trying to understand Why can't, Why can't we be happy? So, hey, you are listening to The Real Black Coffee, No Sugar, No Cream. And I am so grateful to be back, black, gray, and proud. You know, Someday, that song we just listened to by Millard Thomas, my wonderful cousin, has a deep-rooted meaning. Someday will come, I hope. And I don't know if I'll see it in this lifetime. But someday will come where we have unity, where we have harmony in this country. And most of all, we have cures for debilitating illnesses. And one of them is sickle cell. So I'm going to just show you a brief clip of a young woman who lives daily with sickle cell. And when we come back, we're going to hear from Mr. Craig Bradley, who is with the Sickle Cell Disease Association of America's Michigan chapter. Roll the clip, please, Marquise. Hi, my name is Zaire Seals, and I work for the military, and I work in the call center to help the military serve supplies. Um, currently, I have the disease sickle cell anemia, and I was born with it. I graduated um, from Battle Creek Central in 2012, and I graduated college with my associates in arts from in 2015 from Kellogg Community College. I'm still going to school, and I pursue to go to Michigan State in January and get my um, bachelor's in psych. I love children. Um, I want to help adolescents in inner cities and urban um, schools and be able to pursue something in psychology. And my parents have always been a big major impact in my life with the disease. Um, I always grew up in and out the hospitals and my parents have been the best supporters ever. Basically when you have the sickle cell disease in your body, um, you guys have a full red, uh, a full red bl blood circle and in my body it's shaped like a Pac-Man shape or a Caressin shape so our, our cells does not flow as properly as they, sh they should. And, but that, that could not stop me at all. I have played basketball, I played tennis, I have played um, gymnastics, I did everything. So never think that you having the sickle cell anemia disease can stop you from doing anything. And I encourage anybody with the disease, don't ever be afraid because you have something and you're different from others. You should be glad that you're different from others and doing other things. So always have a positive mindset with the disease. I want everyone to get involved and get information and learn more about the sickle cell disease. So that's exactly what we're trying to do today. Juneteenth is a celebration of our freedom, but we're not truly free. You know, there are a lot of aspects to that statement I just made, but now I'm going to hone in on just disease states within 
the black community and sickle cell is one of them. So I welcome my guest, Mr. Bradley. How are you, Mr. Bradley? I'm very good. That's good. And thank you so much for coming. First of all, being a part of the Juneteenth celebration yes. with uh, what you have going on, which we'll get into later. So I thank you so much about that because it's not just awareness of the day that we were liberated and free as individuals. It is more about how we take care of ourselves and how we move about as black Americans. So why is sickle cell important? Well, sickle cell is important because um, let's just uh, look at the statistics in the state of Michigan alone. There are uh, over 4,000 um, people uh, with sickle cell disease. Uh, we call them warriors because they are in a battle for their health. And, and um, when you have that many people um, you know, suffering from a particular disease in the black community, it, it affects everyone their families, uh, their friends. Um, one of the things warriors uh, uh, talk about a lot is the fact that they're, um, they, they make plans and then uh, because they're excited, because they may really be interested in what they're going to do or, or excited about the event that they're going to participate in, that may bring on a pain crisis. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, um, uh, pain crisis is the uh, primary um, um, primary uh, side effect of sickle cell disease, and you know even though they may look um, um, normal and pain free, um, often they're in discomfort, and a lot of them experience uh, severe pain on a daily basis. Wow, and you're right. Um, I, I have some situations going on within my body and, you know, um, I had a handicap placard mm. and people will see me get out of my vehicle and move about and like, oh, you're not handicapped, you know, or whatever. But illness, certain illnesses don't have a look. That's and right. sickle cell is one of them. Sickle cell is one of them. And, and it doesn't have a look. It can impact anyone, but it impacts those of us in the black community more. more yes. And to live with pain day to day, um, I have anxiety, so I can understand the flare up somewhat. Because if I get too excited about stuff, it sends my anxiety into overboard. But I don't experience pain with that. It's more of setting the boundaries for me mentally, but to... Ha get excited about something and then it throws you into severe pain I can only imagine how debilitating that is to live with on a daily basis it's, it's very significant and uh, warriors often talk about uh, that well they also experience uh, pain crisis that can be um, triggered by weather cold weather and warm weather um, so there are a lot of a lot of uh, things that you know most of us uh, take for granted that um, can basically uh, cause a crisis and, and send a person, send a sickle cell warrior to the hospital. Wow, and I like the term warrior. Yes. It has a lot of power behind it and a lot of positivity behind it because they are fighting they every are. day. I didn't know that it was triggered by weather also. So yes. there are warriors out there at this very moment with this 90 degree temperature Absolutely. battling. And then on the days that it's frigid, battling, get excited about something, battling, you know, so it's just an ongoing crisis, an ongoing war. So to call them warriors, I think, um, is very noble, and I salute and respect that terminology. It's, it's, it's very fitting. It's very fitting because, again, uh, uh, like most of us, they just want to live their lives in, in uh, day to day in a regular sense, and but those day-to-day -day activities can be triggering yes they can and i understand that why ypsilanti so you have this upcoming <laughs> walk you know in in celebration of juneteenth which i like it you know we we would want to be free from disease and sure. other things as we are still fighting for our freedom within this country but to be free from disease is another thing that we would like to be so why Ypsilanti? Well, Ypsilanti, um, because of the Juneteenth uh, celebration, uh, we wanted to add a component of uh, health and, and um, um, 
we were honored to be included and uh, asked to participate in this year's celebration. So we, we this is our inaugural uh, walk at this fourth uh, Juneteenth celebration in Ypsilanti, and we are looking forward to being there um, into the future, absolutely. So tell us more about, this is a sickle cell awareness walk, and I have a little bit of information, but tell us more about the walk. So we know it's about awareness, and I thank yes. you so much for coming on the Black Coffee platform today to talk about that awareness, and hopefully um, the word gets out. I hope that this video is shared with those of us who need to hear more information about the history of Juneteenth yes. and about the fact that health is wealth. And the more information we know, the better we can understand things and help someone else and be more compassionate towards yes. others who are living and battling every day with this disease. So tell us about the walk. How does someone register? What time does it take place? Where does it begin? Sure. Okay, so the walk, um, the, the time period for the walk on Saturday, this Saturday, is um, from 9 to 1. We want you to um, come in and register. Uh, the walk will start probably about 10, 30, 11. We're going to walk down the historic streets of downtown Ypsilanti. And um, the whole point of us being there is to raise awareness about sickle cell disease, to celebrate the uh, uh, Juneteenth celebration, and um, one of the uh, little known facts, this is one of the reasons that we have to be out here raising awareness, is uh, June 19th is actually World Sickle Cell Day. And that was established in uh, 2008 by the um, United Nations because sickle cell disease is a world problem. There are, uh, we, we don't have, uh, unfortunately, exact statistics, but we um, know that there are at least 2 million people around the world that have sickle cell disease, 100,000 Americans that have sickle cell disease, and then, in the, as I think I mentioned before, in the state of Michigan, 4,000 4, um, people with sickle cell disease in the state of Michigan, and most of those, as you can imagine, are in the Ypsilanti, Ann Arbor, and Detroit metro area. So... Um, um, the, the agency has been around since uh, 1971, so we've been in business for over 50 years. Um, our founder, uh, Dr. Charles Witten, was the, uh, one of the founders of the national organization. So Detroit has been in this uh, fight and battle from uh, the very beginning, obviously for a very, very long time. Our office is um, located on uh, James Cousins, uh, right between um, Schaefer and Seven Mile. We've been there for over 50 years. And this is our first opportunity to do an awareness walk in Ypsilanti, and we are excited to be there. Wow. I'm excited as well to commemorate the first walk yes. on Juneteenth. So that's awesome. What a, a, a great thing to be able to launch the walk on Saturday, but to have the synergy with Juneteenth yes. as that date of June 19th. So thank you for that history. So you said all people have to do is come and register. So where will they come? Uh, uh, okay, we're going to meet at the, um, uh, we're, we're really excited that we have a, a, a major sponsor for the walk. It is University Bank. They're opening a new branch um, at 301 West Michigan in um, downtown Ypsilanti. And we're going to meet there in that parking lot uh, for those that ha uh, registration is available. If you, um, it, uh, you'll, I'm sure you have the flyer. The uh, the uh, registration uh, pages or site is available uh, on the flyer. Uh, I know on our website and also um, the Juneteenth celebration um, website, so you can register. But you know. We have we want you to register if at all possible because we'd like to know how many people are coming. But we do expect there to be a large a number of walk ups, and we you know we want everybody to come out and and walk and raise awareness about sickle cell disease. So, let me reiterate: sure. this is a free event. It's free. You can free, take free, part free. of history because this is the first and the inaugural sickle cell walk. 
You can come to 301 West Michigan Avenue to the location of the new University Bank in Ypsilanti and meet there and become a part of this inaugural walk. Sickle Cell Awareness Day is synonymous with Juneteenth by way of being on June 19th. Don't you want to be a part of history? Don't you want to learn more information about sickle cell? Don't you want to be a part of this amazing walk? Absolutely. And if you are able, please come. Are people able to bring their pets, their children? Definitely bring the children. Um, if you got your uh, small dog on a leash, uh, we welcomed those uh, in the past at our other walks. So um, I don't know. I don't think there are any restrictions as far as that's concerned. But definitely want to bring out uh, children. Because uh, as, as we all know, with that number of uh, people that have sickle cell disease, we all in our community have a sickle cell disease story. We know mm -hmm. somebody that has sickle mm -hmm. cell disease. And if you don't know um, someone with sickle cell disease, you certainly know someone with sickle cell trait. Mm -hmm. One out of 13 African Americans have sickle cell trait. And it takes two people with sickle cell trait to basically um, have a child with sickle cell disease. So it's important that uh, people, particularly of, um, of uh, childbearing age, know what their status is. And that's part of what we do. We, we can direct you for uh, a, finger, a finger prick to have your blood tested and identify whether you have trait. It's just important to know. Yes, it is. So small pets on a leash have been there before because, you know, we are in the era of emotional support animals. I've seen people with lizards at the grocery store. So small dogs on a leash. Welcome. Children, you're welcome. Come and explore this wonderful opportunity. And when you finish walking, you can stay around for the fourth annual Juneteenth Festival. And we have a wonderful lineup on Saturday, 11 a.m. Hustle les Lessons with Dance with Elegance. There'll be vendors, food, youth-friendly activities, music. As you heard um, from Dwele in the first segment, he's gonna close us out with his soul soulful sounds. And so much more on Sunday, we're going to have gospel and giggles and Coco will be there to provide the com comedy segments and Big Dooley, who will also be my co-host on Saturday, but he will also be hosting on Sunday for gospel and giggles. So we just have a wonderful time planned for you at the fourth annual Juneteenth celebration brought to you by the city of Ypsilanti, United Way, University Bank, Survivor Speaks, Puffer Reds, and so many more. So Mr. Bradley, is there anything you want to leave my listeners with? I do. Um, we plan on, uh, there's gonna be water, so don't worry about the heat. Remember that it's free. Um, all are welcome. We are really uh, looking forward to this inaugural walk, and we're looking forward to coming back every year. We want to raise community awareness about sickle cell disease, and we want to honor the Juneteenth celebration. Thank you so much, and thank you for taking time to come out and be my guest today. Well, there you have it, folks. We're going to celebrate Juneteenth. We're going to celebrate the Black Music Month history. There are going to be people there that sing blues, jazz, R&B, gospel, because June is also Black Music Month. In addition to that, you're going to be able to get information on sickle cell and participate in the walk. You can bring your children out to join in the celebration. And of course, you can stop by and say hello to me because I will be the MC on Saturday. There will be a DJ bringing music on the ones and twos and it's just gonna be a wonderful time to be had by everyone. So don't meet me there, beat me there. As always, you have been listening to The Real Black Coffee, No Sugar, No Cream, where I don't try to spill the tea or make you feel dazed like you drank a shot of cheap liquor. I just wanna articulate strong, 
factual statements. And guess what? They are my opinion. And that's all. So, with that being said, we are going to close this out. Thank you so much for listening. I hope I see you at the Juneteenth celebration, which will be at 107 Ferris Street, Ypsilanti, Michigan, in the lot behind Puffer Reds. And you can stop in there and get you some Converse. I'm telling you, there's nothing like it. I got a pair on my feet right now. So with that being said, we're out of here. See you next week where I'll be talking about divided we fail. Why are blacks so territorial when we're all just trying to do the work in our community? I don't understand it, but I have some ideology behind it. So with that being said, we're out of here. See you next week.